and hopefully I am live. Let's see. Um, I'm going to type that into the chat. Hopefully live now. Okay, and uh, maybe somebody will tune in and let me know if they can actually um, <laughs> see or hear any of this. Um, let me go ahead and just start off with saying, hi everyone, I hope your week is starting off well. Um, my name is Waylena here at the Starkle Planetarium at Parkland College in Champaign, Illinois. And um, almost done with the summer series of live streams, just been having a bit of fun with it. And oh, there, uh, Jeff Bryant says that he can see and hear fine. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, for those of you uh, uh, watching later here, Jeff, uh, if you don't already know, is my husband and uh, has been just such a, a help to me over the years and certainly in the last uh, few weeks here. Um, so I'm still not entirely sure what I'm going to share with you today. I know that uh, last week I shared a little bit of stuff on um, well, now I don't even remember what I shared last week, but I know that we did some things with, uh, we, you know, we've done over these weeks, we've done some things with uh, stitching images, and we've done a little bit of stuff with uh, Blender, and I do have a little bit of that that I can um, share for you. Um, first, let me change to screen with my face little instead of big, so there we go. Okay. Uh, so planetarium shows uh, tomorrow is the last of our summer matinee programs. So that will be uh, Tuesday afternoon, uh, the uh, One World, One Sky, Big Bird's Adventure at 2 o'clock, and Did an Asteroid Really Kill the Dinosaur at 3 o'clock. And there will be no matinees on Thursday. We have other uh, things that were previously scheduled at that time. Friday night, we will have uh, 7 o'clock Summer Prairie Skies and 8 o'clock Dawn of the Space Age. And then next week, we switch. Our Friday night programs will be um, still Summer Prairie Skies, but we'll be switching to Solar Superstorms for the 8 o'clock. And because it will be... Um, uh, the So that's the fourth we're talking about here, uh, August. Um, and then because it is that first weekend of the month will be uh, showing uh, Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon at 9. But this week, yeah, no Pink Floyd this week because uh, this week is still July. Okay, so that's our calendar. Oh, almost forgot. Oh, thank goodness I made a, a note of it here. Um, parking. So this week, parking for the planetarium um, normally and all the signs and everything say to go to the um, uh, the lot that's closest to us, which is the M1 lot. That lot is being resurfaced. Um, oh, this is going to... Ah, let me see. I'm going to switch to the... Oh, very bright. <laughs> but we'll, we'll get through all this. Uh, so right here where my mouse is, that's uh, where the uh, planetarium is. It's not marked on this particular map, but it's right here at the end of the M wing. Um, really, it's between the main part of M Wing and the C Wing, which has the theater. And normally, we would park over here in this M1 lot, and uh, that's the one that's being resurfaced and painted this week. So we cannot park there. You can still drop off. You know, if you're coming into Parkland this way or this way, you can still drop off in this little little drive right here. Uh, but for parking, um, you need to either park way out in the uh, M2 or M3 lots, which still might be best if you've got like a bus or something you're dropping off. Um, but honestly, it's going to be a little bit of a pain to walk past around that construction. So um, I'm suggesting everybody go to the C4 or C3 lots. You still have a walk, but it's you're not walking through where they have, you know, you're not having to get up onto the grass to walk around to try and get around the um, uh, resurfacing. Plus, it's kind of messy and, and stuff over there. Um, so just wanted everyone to know that. Um, let's see a little bit. Uh, there's a new Blender version uh, has come out sometime in the last, I don't really know. I just realized this right before, right before I started the live stream. 
um, that there's 3.6.1, so that would be um, you know point 0.1, that means that they, they made a few fixes, um, something really small and incremental. And so I have not yet, I downloaded it, but I have not opened it up to, uh, to see, and I haven't, to my knowledge, run into any um, bugs with that. Um, so if I do, I'll let you know next week because I've definitely scheduled for one more of these live streams. Um, so what was I going to show with Blender? Let me pull it up. Okay, let me move this over here. Ah, here's Blender. We've got the default cube. Um, don't mind me with this view. I have a custom view that um, uses the um, uses the asset browser feature that you can set up and um, things that you reuse regularly, you can keep them uh, set up in a way that you just drag it and drop it in. You just drag and drop it in. Oh, it's great. Um, but let's see. Um, so with Blender, let's say I want to render some full dome video type stuff. Um, that's great, but um, hmm. there's two renderers that come with Blender. One is um, very fast and great, but it doesn't do, you can't do fisheye and panoramic stuff with it uh, natively. Um, and that one's called EV, E-E-V-E-E. -E. The other is longer. It's more of a, a ray trace. It's very, uh, it's very good, but it takes some time. And as a friend of mine who is an excellent, excellent teacher of all things, especially Blender, um, so shout out to Ron Proctor. I'll mention him again later. Um, as he would say, it's computationally expensive. He taught me that in uh, 2010 when I attended a uh, um, a uh, couple that were back-to-back -back, uh, week-long Blender workshops, and um, oh, they were well worth it. The training it was it was excellent. I was a pretty advanced student at the time already, but oh, I got so much out of it, and the brainstorming time to uh, figure out how to do things that were beyond the scope of the class. It was it was just so much fun. Um, well, let's say you've got Blender and you've opened it up. It's not going to look quite like this. You're not going to have the, the little side piece there. But this part, this part has the default cube, as we call it. And you can change your settings to, um, to do all sorts, all different things. You can change your settings to have um, different uh, keyboard mapping. So if you're accustomed to... Um, the keyboard shortcuts in other software, you can change the, uh, in fact, some of them have shortcuts to change all of the key bindings to match those. Um, I'm natively trained on Blender, so I'm not, um, I don't have quite as much trouble with adapting to Blender's shortcuts. Although, you know, every seven or eight years they change some of them and that's always kind of like, ah, you know, start feeling my age then. Um, so we have Blender, the default cube, and um, right now I have it set with the Cycles rendering engine. Let me get the clutter out of the way, and I'm going to pull this. I just hovered, and now I'm pulling with the uh, um, the right mouse button. Um, cycles is the render engine. When I said render, I uh, meant render engine. And the uh, there's actually there's a third. I keep forgetting about Workbench, and Workbench... Um, has some different uh, interesting properties. I haven't really worked with it much, but it um, doesn't show you uh, the materials and things the way that you have them set. But it can uh, you can use it to see all of the different types of objects all at once. But it's just pretty pretty fast, and it's fun when I watch um, tutorials of other people using it. But I'm going to focus on cycles and EV now. If I want the camera to render in fisheye, I need to change both my well, both my output settings and my camera settings. So we're going to go to the camera settings and the camera type. I'm going to change to um, from perspective to panoramic. 
And you can see in the, uh, I have this, the viewport set for this little bubble up here for viewport shading and it's showing rendered view. So this is the, just the normal default view. There's no materials right there. There's a wireframe and there is the rendered view. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, let's see if I go to panorama type, that's where I could do acro rectangular and that if you wanted to make it so that it's just like in a VR headset and you're looking in all directions or if you were going to put it in the dome but then tilt the view you would want to use acro rectangular you would also want to generate acro rectangular if you're going to um, use it as an animated environment texture in another animation that you're making. And I've done that with uh, before where I made a sort of flying through a nebula and I generated it all in echo rectangular. So I can just use that as um, uh, the just the in Blender. It's called the world, but it would be environment map really is a, is a good way of saying it where you're just mapping your entire imaginary sphere that you're inside of when you're in a 3D environment. So lots of uses for it. I'm um, going to, uh, let's see, um, if you're trying to actually match a real fisheye lens, you could use the settings in fisheye equisolid, but for uh, full dome, the uh, best way really is fisheye equidistant. Um, now you'll see it kind of squished because the output settings are not set for a... Um, square image. So I've gone ahead and I've just um, selected over both and now I'm going to type in the same number and it filled them both in. Um, for us playing around in here though, I'm setting it to 25% <laughs> so it won't take uh, take so long because a uh, cycle scene would take a while to render. Um, let me go ahead and just do a test render right now of that Cube. What's in the scene? Just the camera, the cube, and the and a default light. I'm just making that scene kind of show up in there, and I'm hitting um, F12. Down here, I saw that it was rendering. Now I have Blender set right now to when it's rendering. I have it set to not pop up and show other things, and that just gives a little bit more um, power to the uh, render engine. So let me go to rendering and here's the render result. I haven't saved it as a file. Remember, this is only 25%. So as I zoom in on it, it's gonna you know, be kind of icky around the edges. Now uh, that, okay, might not show the, uh, the effect very well. So I'll leave the cube in there for the moment and let me change the world setting. Do I have one in here yet? No, I do not. Let me go over to my personal shortcuts where I have put in a bunch of backgrounds and um, I got these, for the most of them I got from, um, what was it? Um, I think they changed it to, is it Tolly Haven is the name? It used to be HDRI Haven and they changed the name because they've got models and a whole bunch of other stuff now. I will definitely, put, let me make a note because I'm gonna put the link to that in the notes. Now, I mentioned I made a Nebula 2D. I shouldn't be doing this. This is not the one I practiced, but I'm just going to put it in there and voila. It uh, changed my world setting to the Nebula and let me slide through. I'm just sliding up. I keep a timeline on all of my pages. So, okay, so this one is not one that's uh, I don't have it set to be animated but that's okay that's all right it's still good for doing that test render again and this time we have it and it's almost finished there it is so that's kind of okay um 25 percent on that you know what though I think I want more in this scene again this is a nonsensical scene Let me see. I don't know if I want to put that one in. You know what? I'm going to open a different file where I was already playing with this. Um, 
don't save that. Ah, okay. Um, so in here I have, I don't have that background in. Let me find it again. I'll put the nebula background in. Okay, so this is similar, but what I've got is I've got a um, 3D grid. Let me go into 3D view and just not looking through the camera, but just showing what I have. I've got a, uh, a just a, a grid cube made of uh, grid pieces and just some text showing me what is where. And if I look through the rendered view, there's my nice fisheye view. Now, since I opened a new file, I need to make sure that, good, I'm set for 25%. All right, so now if I render this, um, we'll get the same thing. See down here, it's rendering progress. 25%, it renders fairly quickly. Um, so 4.43 seconds. Let me tell you, rendering this at 4096 by 4096, well, take a depressingly long amount of time. Um, <laughs> it's okay though, it's okay. Um, still worth it for some things. Um, now that other render, render engine, Eevee, renders very quickly, but it does not, um, yeah, it doesn't render a fisheye view. So, we could do things like render uh, panels and then stitch those panels together in software like Hoogan, which I have done before uh, because you can, once you get it set up, you can then save the Hoogan file and then use it on a command line in a script to go through all of the image sets that you have. Um, so you would render out multiple cameras, dee, 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 and you would end up with for, let's say you've got um, a 300 frame little animation, 300 frames, and you would end up rendering for all the positions that you're stitching. So for each of those positions, you would have 300 frames, and then you would use um, a script on the command line, which I've done before for Hoogan. I did it with... Um, as a batch file on Windows and also a uh, shell script on Linux to be able to do it. And it worked great too. Um, other ways you can uh, do it, there are other uh, softwares out there that can, uh, that can stitch. Uh, I'm gonna show a, a free tool that I found um, that's free to download off of uh, GitHub. And it does a pretty good job of it. It has some serious limitations. Um, there's another tool that I found that I've only just started working with a couple days ago, so I'm not ready to show anything with it. That was a purchased add-on. But this one is a free add-on. And let me go ahead and find, there we go. All right, so, um, and I'm gonna have this link also the, uh, it's called EEVR, and it's uh, from uh, GitHub user Eternal Trail. And um, what it does is it uh, takes takes the uh, uh, the pictures of the cube positions. So front, left, right, back, top, bottom, and then it in the script. Um, blends them together. Now it's not using Blender to do that blending. It's using um, a tool in Python to do it. And I've dug into the script a little bit just to try and see how it's done and uh, it's gonna take me more time to get my head around it. The reason I'd like to know more about exactly what's going on under the hood is because it does not output transparency even if the initial renders are transparent the final result is stitched together is not transparent so um, which limits its usage um, I did find and I don't know if I yeah I don't have that folder handy um, I did find that doing a full dome view in using this plugin and then comparing side by side with my results from cycles it, it was a match so if this plug-in could be made to do transparency. 
that would be really, really big. And why would that be big? Because you could have all of your foreground action-y stuff done in Eevee and then just things that need um, really good glow effects in the background. Because when you're stitching things that are glowy, you get weird intersection type um, effects going on. So let me show a couple of things. So um, what you do is you would um, go up to the spot where it says code and you would download the zip file. Then from in Blender, now normally, this is what you do normally, from within Blender, you would then go to install the add-on and I can show where that would be found. So edit in Blender, edit, preferences, add-ons, install, and then that's when you would, um, I keep mine in a third party spot, that's where you would find it, the zip file, and install. Um, but I mean, there is something that you do need to do to get this script to work in the current version of Blender. Something you'll notice, well you might not, but if you're using an older version of Blender, um, in preferences, you can um, enable community add-ons, official add-ons, or, or both. Um, there used to be a category called testing, and this add-on used that category. Well, since that category doesn't exist anymore, everything past, I think, Blender 3.4, has it gives an error, right? Um, so you're not able to then install it. Let me show you. Oh, I don't know if I can find it. It's going to be in the wrong spot. I don't know. Um, let me open a new one in the file explorer. Hold on, I'm doing this on the off screen. On the off screen so I can find this thingy. I know, while I'm broadcasting live, it's crazy, isn't it? Okay. Um, so let me pull up I'm right now I'm unzipping um, I'm unzipping this but I renamed it to original because I don't want to overwrite what I already did and let me go into that all right so um, I renamed the file uh, master original and then I uh, unzipped it so I could go into it uh, without because I don't want to mess up the version that I'm actually using. And inside of it, there's, um, in all the Blender add-ons, you get this, uh, there's a Python script that's the uh, underscore init underscore pi. And then there's the, um, the actual software, the render.py, but it's this one, the init.py. Uh, and, oh, hang on, this is going to... All right, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna open it with Notepad. Normally, I would open it with Blender, but I don't want to mess up the Blend file. Oh, this is really, really, really great. I'm gonna move it. Oh, so you can use any text editor. Unfortunately, um, I usually do this in Blender, but over here, um, Blender. Here's the version of the software under where it says BL Info. Here's the version that's the software, and then here's the Blender version down here where it says Support Testing. Um, just delete that. So delete it, save, and then um, you would rezip, rezip the file. So unzip the file, find the init.py, change it, get just get rid of that part that says testing. So the, the between the quotes where it says testing, just get rid of testing, boom, and then. Um, save the file, you know, save the, the, the Python file, close the, uh, close the file, then zip the whole thing again, and then you can go to Blender and it will install just fine. Now, whew, all that. Yeah, I know. Um, there was a note in there where somebody, uh, where the, uh, author said they were going to have that fixed in a later version, but I haven't seen that, uh, seen that happen yet. Um. Still, though, not a bad not a bad amount of uh, intervention for a free tool that um, is is still pretty powerful. Okay, let me see. I did render this one out, so I'm gonna save this image, save as, and I really don't want 
Um, you know what? I did want that, didn't I? Listen to me. Okay, EV testing side by side. And this is, I would just call this um, live stream demo cycles. Okay, I should have saved that before. I did not, but I want to save it so that I have it. And I'm also going to set a different render slot. And actually, no, I'm not because it's not going to pop up in here. So that doesn't matter. Normally, it's like I use these render slots to be able to just do a side to side comparison, but that's not going to work in this case. I forgot. Um, okay, so at least I don't think it will. You know what? It doesn't hurt to do that. So, okay. Now, what I want to do is show you how to use that plugin. And I'm trying to remember. I think I go to, yes. So I hit the N key in my 3D viewport, and that brings up these side tabs and it's in tool. I don't need object scatter. I'm not using it. I'm not transforming any options. There we go. Okay, so right here. Is it here? No. Okay. Here? There. Okay. Um these are the settings. I'm setting to full dome. It's not using the camera that I made though. Um I do need to set it to EV, so I'm changing the render edge engine to EV. Okay, so now what it's showing in the view through the camera is no longer the cycles view, but that does not matter right now. What matters is the settings are the settings is the set. Okay. Um, gonna, we can do aqua rectangular if we want, or we can do a uh, full dome. Um, now I set the, uh, um, you can set the different, uh, what am I doing here? Uh, yeah, I can leave it there. That's fine. It's it's not going to matter with this. Um, you can set it if there's no side panels. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, let's just give it a try. Uh, I better save this. In fact, I'm gonna save it as a different version since I made a bunch of little changes. Okay, now I'm going to render that image. And it doesn't take too terribly long. It's working. What it's doing is it's taking those pictures. And then, um, okay, so what it shows is the uh, most recent of the rendered results. So there's the, the last one that it rendered was the top view. Let me see if I can find... Um, I had my third party up in there. Let's see. This is going to take a moment. I know I was so ill prepared this time. Why am I singing that? I don't know. I don't know. Zoning and testing. EV testing. Ah, there we go. Okay, so EV testing. And... Mm, no, I definitely had the wrong. I chose unwisely. So I'm going to do this again. And I'm going to set it back the way it was. Yeah, I didn't mean to have it like that. So we'll do it like that. I'm going to try that one. This is what I get for messing with things. I had an example all ready to go, but it didn't have the nebula background. And I thought, oh, I'm going to show the nebula background. All right, let's see what we got. Uh, still not quite the right thing. Yeah, this is not what I want. That's, yeah, that's more like it's trying to go echo rectangular in there. So this is, uh, this is what I get for messing with the, uh, messing with everything too much. Yeah, I don't remember on my We'll try it. Ah. Well, if this is the most embarrassing thing that happens this week, I'll be all right. So 
So while I'm skipping along on this, I do want to show that some of my earlier tests were much better. Ah, there we go. Much more like that. Yay, finally. Okay, so um, I'm going to copy this into the little side-by-side -side view and I can this one which is the one that we did in cycles and this one come on show me this one make it small thank you windows and when I was comparing these in um, my initial tests I actually loaded them as layers in GIMP and sort of did a blink back and forth on them. And yeah, I know these aren't scaled quite the same, but almost. And I was really impressed with how well they did uh, layer. Now, if I did this render without the, uh, without the grid, we would be able to see the seams a lot more. But still, this is pretty useful. Now, do you remember the funky stars flying at us thing video that I made a few weeks ago that I've been using in the little stream starting soon? Um, let me see if I can put this on here. Yeah, this thing that's all around me. Now, first of all, the colors I oversaturated in OBS. Let me go ahead and put this back before I forget. Uh, so real quick, I decided, hmm, all right. So some limitations of this EEVR uh, add-on. Um, yes, you have to go ahead and edit that file to use it with the current blender, uh, but it does work. And you need to, um, what else? Oh, it doesn't do uh, alpha channels, which really limits, really limits um, potential for it. Um, and stitching the edges, glowy stuff, can get a little bit uh, weird. Um, let me bring this down and show. Uh, so I opened that file. Let me get Blender back up here. There we go. All right, let me save that. So I open something recent because I had it in there. Yes, fake star travel loop. Um, and this is one where, uh, okay, so the other limitation of the EEVR, that's right, I knew there was another big one. Because it creates the EV camera on the fly and takes a whole bunch of pictures before it then uses some uh, OpenGL Voodoo with Python uh, to stitch them, it's not using your camera and your position. So, um, to animate a whole scene changing the view, you can't you can't do that. It's just going to give you this uh, position zero 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 view. Um, in the case of this animation that I made, uh, it was a loop where we make all of the uh, fun star things just come at us. So the camera, um, although I made my camera move a little bit just to give some variation in it. Um, when I did the EV version, of course, it doesn't it doesn't do that. So what I did was I used the uh, the EV settings and I used render animation. Now for render animation using this, you have to output it as image sequence. So if in your render settings, if you tell it, um, sorry, I can't get output. Do do there we go. Um, so you tell it, tell a PNG or something. Do not tell it um, in any of these, you know, you can, you can do that just fine. Um, just don't, don't tell it to be an animation format or it'll pop up an error message that then disappears very quickly. So you have to <laughs> then look at the system console to see what the message was. It's like, oh, I was using animation format. Okay, so what I did, I generated that loop again, whole image sequence and these are those files and that's just me scrolling through them and then um, also using blender just because well why not um, I don't remember where I output it but this 
is the uh, we can let it loop there. That's the full dome, full domified version um, that I could just take and put into the dome. Um, I what I did was I just took that image sequence in the Blender uh, video editor and just stuck it in there. Got the render settings the way I wanted and just stitched it all together. So that's kind of that's kind of cool. I'll probably put that in the dome a little bit later and look at that because um, I did go um, bigger frame size on that. All right, so that's two ways. Um, if uh, if you're interested in setting up your own full dome camera, um, I set mine up once for cycles, you know, and I just pop it in when I need it instead of setting it up from scratch. Um, I'll include a link to, uh, and a lot of you, if you've followed these before, you probably already have this. I'll put a link to my uh, my GitHub where I've got, you can download uh, a PDF and some, some companion blend files that include setting up for full dome camera in cycles. And they're materials that are a few years old now, but they still work. It's just pre-geometry nodes. So, you know, the modeling stuff in there is outdated because there's a lot more tools now. Um, but the setting up of the Cycles full dome camera is in there. And it was materials from a workshop that I presented at um, the GLPA conference a few years ago. Um, also, I'm going to include you know, a link to this uh, EEVR Let's see. Oh, hi, Brett. Let's see. Could you uh, Z rotation to that uh, star animation? Um, you would need to, in this particular case, you'd need to rotate the scene um, to be able to do that. If you're doing it in cycles, obviously, yes, you could then just animate the cycles camera. Um, what I would have to do is um, animate the, uh, the cube object in here let me see we're just showing a side view and i'm taking it off of uh, rendered view for a moment and go to the cube i can rotate the cube so that whole thing right there i could rotate it around um not sure though i would probably parent it to an empty object and rotate the empty in the the z um Another uh, thing, if you're looking at, let's see, if um, you were trying to change the, um, oh, I closed that animation. If you're looking at changing just the full dome angle, you could, when you're taking the uh, dome masters, you could rotate the uh, uh, the whole thing in the um the video editor, which honestly, the video editor is just using FFmpeg under the hood. So if you're used to using FFmpeg on a command line, run with that because that's very powerful. Uh, but I just got in the habit of doing it through Blender and I did it this way. So this um, this is the EEVR plugin. Um, I found a on Blender Market, someone made a nifty 360 uh, plugin that does similar. It, it uses its own preset uh, EVR cameras, but they're parented to an empty, so you can change, you can program like normal, you know, set up your animation. And that I've only just started working with, uh, but it does show a lot of promise, and it was $15 on Blender Market, so uh, if I uh, uh, come up with more, I can talk about that a little bit next week, uh, because that gives us a lot more power. Um, using this um, free plugin that's on off of uh, GitHub, Oh my goodness, it's made it's so fast, but there are a lot of imitation uh, limitations to work through. Um, and yeah, having to animate the scene around your camera, that's, that's limiting. Um, another thing that limits it for me is that I like to animate the camera and I made a Python script that um, takes the path of a camera through a scene, exports it to a CSV file set up so that the Digistar can read it. And so I can mix and match some things that I'm doing in Blender with things that I've got going in real time in the dome uh, because I'm greedy and I want it all like that. Um, so being able to animate the camera is kind of a big 
deal. So I'll let you guys know about the um, um, the plugin that I bought from uh, someone on Blender Market because it, it looks like it has amazing potential. Now, anytime you are using um, Eevee and you're making things glow, you are going to get some weirdness around the seams, especially where the three corners of your virtual cube come together. And that's just that's just how that's going to be. That's why if you've got a lot of things with star fields, I would do the star fields in um, um, with cycles. Um, let me see. I wanted to finish up by um, giving a, another shout out to my friend Ron Proctor. And he's got, um, well, not, ju not just him, but uh, he and uh, Amy Jo Proctor have um, on Proctor Creative as their website. They are starting up. Um, really, really excited for them about this. Um, Blenderverse TV, they've started up and it has a YouTube channel associated with it. They've got a couple workshops coming up. These are, um, uh, let's see, it, do, it does cost to participate in these workshops. Um, but I've got to tell you folks, it is, let me get it over here. It's not on the screen. There we go. Um, it's very well worth it. The, uh, you know, if you already know a little bit, you're going to learn a lot more. Um, they're, they're great to work with. Uh, just phenomenal, phenomenal trainers and collaborators, too. So uh, they're great for bouncing ideas off of. Um, let's see. So I think, yes, the registration is open for them for uh, August 3 through 7 and has, um, you know, all of their process or sorry, <laughs> policies for refunds and such. They give a really nice, really nice overview of everything that's going to be involved. Um, if, you know, honestly, if I had the time, I'd be tempted to uh, participate in this myself, even though, you know, that's a nice little chunk of change. But uh, y'all, it's it's worth it. I'm trying to remember the quote that I said from the uh, 2010 workshop from them. Um, Oh yeah, it was like Christmas for my brain. Uh, it was great. I learned so much, and it it ah uh, it's just phenomenal. And I I I saw it. It's worth a look. Okay, very much worth a look. And seeing if you're able to um to do this, I have signed up for the uh, uh yes. There's a there's a discount code you can get if you subscribe to their newsletter. Um, like I said, I'm not going to be able to participate in it myself, but I did subscribe to the newsletter because I want to I want to know what kind of uh, things they're up to and resources. So please do check it out um, and also check out their main website here, uh, proctorcreative.com. So shout out and yes, disclaimer, um, I'm like to think I'm very good friends with uh, with uh, with Ron, especially we've uh, got good Blender Planetarium history together. Uh, that covers it, I think, for, uh, like I said, I walked into today not really knowing what I was going to uh, talk about, but I, I hope this has been a little bit fun. We'll, we'll see what we come into for uh, next week. I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream or end the broadcast, stop the stream, both of those. So thank you all so much.